time for a little magic. Voila. I shall now make this move from this hand to this hand. There you have it. And for my finale, <laughs> these shall disappear from my hand. So do you think I have a profession as a magician when my time as interim ends here? You're shaking your heads no. Why is that? I mean, I pulled one out, of, I pulled that little ball out of my ear. I made this move from this hand to this hand. They disappeared from my hands. I mean, what's the deal? I, it, 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 I did what I said I'd do. Um, but yeah, magic probably isn't on the horizon for me as a profession. These will remain here as reminders of how I didn't show any mystery in the magic. Isn't that what magic is? It's, it's, it's mystery. It's, it's how a magician tricks our senses into seeing something happen that we don't know how it happened. They try to trick our, they trick our mind into seeing something different than what reality might suggest it is. Magic loses its mystery when we know the answer to the question, how did he do that? How did she do that? A definition of mystery. Something occurs and we do not know how it happened. Indeed, Webster defines mystery as something unexplained, unknown, or kept secret. The mystery of the kingdom of God is the focus of the parables Jesus offers about scattering seed and about the mustard seed. The parable of the mustard seed is likely one of the more familiar parables in Scripture. It also appears with minor variations in Matthew and Luke. The parable of scattering seed is not that familiar and only appears in Mark. Together, they add an exclamation point to the parable of the sower, which begins chapter 4. As you might recall, the parable of the sower describes what happens when seed is scattered on a path, on rocky ground, among the thorns, and in fertile soil. Seed scattered on the hard path is eaten by birds. Seeds on rocky soil might take root, but there is little soil, and after they sprout, the seeds wither and die. The plants wither and die because of the sun. The roots aren't deep enough. Seeds among the thorns can't receive the sun, and they die. Seeds in fertile soil grow abundantly. This is how the word of God is received. The exclamation points formed by the parables in today's reading express two crucial elements of the kingdom of God. First, the kingdom of God is a mystery which we cannot control. And second, the kingdom of God is a mystery in its immensity. Let's look at the two parables one at a time. <clears throat> the parable of the scattered seed, likely wheat, does not represent sound fundamentals of farming. Randomly scattering seed is done without any preparation of the soil or weeding. The farmer is described as getting up and going to sleep and not tending the wheat at all. All of the gardeners here today know that especially with the recent rains, weeding is at least a minimum needing to be done. I'm glad we live in a townhome. I don't have room for a garden and don't have to weed, don't have to take care of anything growing. Yet this parable references the seed sprouting on its own and the farmer not knowing the cause. The earth produces out of its natural processes and produces the grains for an abundant harvest. The parable of simplicity draws us into the mystery of the certainty which it proclaims. 
God's kingdom is already present, whether it is obvious to our abilities of perception and discernment or not. It arrives in all it arrives in all its glory and splendor because that's the way it's meant to be. The mustard seed parable deepens the mystery. Not only is the reality of God's kingdom beyond our abilities of perception and comprehension, it is beyond our abilities of imagination. Look at the mustard seed taped to your bulletin. So very small. Yet from such a small seed grows a bush, a shrub, where the birds of the air make their home. It's a mystery how something so big grows out of something so small. What God has in store when the kingdom is fully present in all creation is truly beyond our wildest dreams. Such a confident portrayal of God's kingdom could lead us to give up on any planning or visioning for the future. The realm of God is already present everywhere. So what does it matter what any of us do? What will be, will be. Let's just pack it up, hold all of our possessions in common, and wait for the return of Christ and the full realization of God's kingdom on earth. This is the path taken by some at every turn of the century, or when some modern wannabe prophet proclaims a date for the end of the world or the return of Christ. Gratefully, this is not our attitude toward God, toward life, toward faith. Obviously, what we are offered in these parables is a glimpse at one side of the paradox of faith. The contrasting side of the faith paradox is represented in the mission statement of our congregation. I invite you to read it with me. To worship and serve God with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. We believe that God's grace engages the whole person, body, mind, and spirit, to welcome all people into the community of Christ, whatever your age, income, race, gender, or sexual orientation. We believe that Christ's love is a gift for all to share in an environment of worship, freedom, and mutual to grow in spirit through worship, prayer, education, companionship, and service. We believe that spiritual life is a journey of growth in Christ, and we are guided by scripture, the spirit, and the communion we share as disciples of Jesus. To live Christ's love in the world, through service to our neighbors, our community, the nation, and the world. We seek to embrace Christ's vision of peace and justice in every aspect of our lives. The nature of a paradox is that two seemingly opposite ideas are true and held in tension. The more common view of the paradox of faith, living lives faithfully, believing what we do does make a difference is reflected in our mission statement. This view is held in tension with what comes out of today's reading. The kingdom of God is everywhere present, beyond our abilities of perception and comprehension, and it will be fully realized in all its visible glory and splendor in God's good time. Actually, what I believe comes out of these parables is an invitation for our participation in living lives of discipleship with joy and vitality because we know God's kingdom will come. Every day, then, becomes a day of hope no matter what happens, no matter what we are able to do or fail to do, no matter what challenges we face. The reality of the kingdom of God already present in the world, like seeds scattered over the lands of this earth, guarantees our lives will be filled with surprises. Events will take place which will catch us by surprise, 
we will witness the best laid plans being turned upside down with outcomes which no amount of imagination would lead us to expect. The kingdom of God is a mystery to be accepted. The reality of the kingdom of God already present in the world, like the tiny mustard seed disappearing into the ground and then appearing in amazing growth, is completely beyond what our expectations would lead us to believe is possible. The kingdom of God is immense, without borders or limitations. Truly, the presence of God's kingdom is a mystery we will never understand except as we ex- except as we accept the experience of God's ongoing presence in our midst. And it is the living word, Christ, to whom we all turn, who guides us in knowing what experiences old and new are of the kingdom. God's kingdom, God's realm, on this earth, awaiting to be fully revealed in God's good time, will come about whether we choose to to participate or not. I hope you choose to participate. 